hug them tight. And it's time to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. And by a better understanding of love than what parents had. Because the truth is, the first Elijah, if you read, his job was to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. That was it. I have a much harder job. I got to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. That's everybody. Everybody. Whew. Think about it. I could explain that one if you want to get theological. And I can explain how that could happen. All people, many, the religious, have always, oh, uh, he went to hell. He didn't believe. Uh, you know what? That's outdated thinking. It's obsolete, Hebrews 8, because according to God's kingdom age covenant, these are the days where perfect love can cast out all fear. And Mickey and many are jumping for joy because it's been a world of fear and a world of tears, festering ones. And they're happy because love is coming to show us how to let perfect love cast out all fear. And praise God, praise God, free at last can we be. Just give them a hug, be as little children. Let that love within you become a verb and not be um, as a noun, dying, forcing us to live and exist in the land of the walking dead. To begin perishing. And it, at the end of that road, if our, we let our love go right out, we commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Taking off my sandals, you can probably hear my straps. Blessed are the those, uh, and, whew, not good, <laughs> but blessed are those that walk uh, in the preparation of the Lord's peace. So I got blessed sandals. Someday I might can get a dollar for them if I put them on uh, for auction. The shoes of another fisherman. I am the fisher of all men. I am the one that is foretold in Habakkuk. I am as greedy as hell and I will never be satisfied as I embrace all people of the earth and bring them towards our good shepherd over all the flocks of man. I am the fisherman of all fishers. <laughs> And I sell fish too. I sell perch and pickerel. I really do. And haddock and halibut and a lot of cool stuff. But guess what? It's time to celebrate. And it's time to look back. For by looking back, only that way can we get a better understanding of what will be tomorrow. Because history does repeat itself. And these are the days of Acts 3.21's prophecy, days of the great restoration, the great regeneration, the days of the restitution of earth. Isaiah 61 is happening. Money from all over this world is flowing in a latra into the highest heavens through many organizations. They're just one. And private money is doing a lot in this world. And it's, it's going to be good if people get with the program of love pray that prayer that everybody gets with the program of love. It's love. It's about love and all about love. So it came to pass as the Lord finished up his major teaching uh, in Jerusalem uh, that our hero of heroes felt in the spirit that he had most of the disciples in front of him for only a short season because he discerned that there would be a revolution amongst them because uh, they could not take his metaphorical words and they were just metaphorical. Uh, it would come to pass shortly that words like, you must drink my blood and eat my body, freak them out. It's like, man, this guy's a cannibal. And it was, <laughs> he was always metaphorical, metaphorically, he didn't want nobody eating on his toe, chewing on his toe, he wouldn't have wanted that, <laughs> I wouldn't want nobody chewing on my toe, would you? No, 
It wasn't about literally eating anything or, or literally drinking anything. The wine and the bread of his, his essence was, is, and always shall be the love. So it came to pass that our hero of heroes then told all of his semi-faithful few because if there were a few fence setters and um, uh, there was a lot of people. I mean, 80, 82 disciples, including the chosen 12, but the other 70 were about ready to be dispatched. And uh, the disaster of their ranks being uh, broken asunder really wouldn't happen until that happening just ahead. But one thing's for sure that uh, he urged them all to search for the secret of the kingdom in their hearts, not in the hills, for it's an inside job and joy is an inside job. And then he told them as well that the eternal kingdom of our Father of Lights was already present in their souls, if only they could believe it within their mind's eyes. And then Jesus began prophesying with his holy word, and he said this, he said, Heaven shall be God's throne, and the earth shall be his footstool. But then he asked this, he said, Where is the house that the people have built for earth's king of glory? Where is the place of my dwelling? All these things have my hands made, said the Lord. The word of God am I. And he let him know. He was uh, very upfront. But to those who are poor and of a contrite spirit, shall I look to and exalt those that are weak. He shall make them strong, along with he who trembles at my word. And he said, Behold, I will extend peace like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles shall become like a flowing stream as my dove of the ages, and my most regal eagle of the eon swoops down in the whitest flutter of holy wings, swooping on down over hearts, hard hearts to pulverize them back into ones of flesh again transforming into the most regal eagle of the eons, just as the visual uh, imagery shifts from the lamb to the lion, just as the dove transcends into the eagle. And then the maple leaf shall be in bloom. From the north, Isaiah 41, and all the world will realize that I am right. And this was foretold of an alcoholic in Genesis 49, 12. It says so in Isaiah 41 that this has been preached since the beginning. The alcoholic of Habakkuk 2, King James. One transgressed by wine, dull of, uh, and red of wine. So the maple leaf shall be in bloom, and the vines shall be spread through the whispering winds of electricity, traveling as the morning glory vine. And he even taught that someday there would be power harnessed. He had a window into the future, being the Alpha and the Omega. And he told them that uh, such like-mindedness of people of love, they would be entwined as a, a net, in the end times, they would be interconnected by technology and mingled with the freedom of sanctified new ideas and better understandings of love at the end. But he let them know love is all we really need. If anyone uh, truly walks in the fullness of love, that is, with them that is the fullness of the law. And such obedience of love always radiates the Almighty's heart, he said, because otherwise closed-minded uh, people are always trapped by their own foolishness, their own blockades. So a sudden moment of silence then swept in, and it came to pass that Jesus then paused for a moment as Emmanuel, one by one, gazed through the open windows of every soul that was there who was dedicated to his gospel of love, hope, and peace before he proclaimed this. So he says this unto his, his um, people 
and several of them were teary-eyed because when he spoke of the future, it was grave and it was exciting and it was a little scary. And so he told them, as one whom his mother comforts, so shall I comfort both you and the Gentiles, and you shall be comforted, the people of Israel, even in Jerusalem, and they, the Gentiles, in the land of the highest flying eagles. And when you see these things, your hearts shall rejoice with all gladness, and their souls in the land of the eagles shall also abound with much celebration in the land of the maple leaf over the five great lakes and a place where uh, people like John North under the northern skies. And after he finished his prophecy, our Lord Isu Yeshua Jesus, Emmanuel, our, our majesty and majesty who was arising in the splendor of his own honor because he was the magnificent and his beneficence went before him. An ocean of adoration was he pouring out. So after he finished his prophecy, he then paused with much thankfulness within, and the Lord was encouraging patience. But before sitting down, Yeshua then said this simply. He said, be patient, and you will see the glory of God ahead. And so shall it be, announced the Lord, for all those tarrying with me, who learns to do the will of, of love of my everlasting Father, who is in heaven. And try to understand that within the Father's love lays my credentials for the mission of truth, of peace, love, and hope, that he will explode all over the circle of earth so that it can be saved, so that his word can uh, relent, so that things will not have to be destroyed, as Jeremiah 30, 24 has always foretold. So he said, uh, consequently, that ensign of the nations then went on to tell his students, uh, all of the disciples there, to always remember that before his kingdom of love comes forth upon his great white cloud of glory in the year 2020 and 21, as his word has been reopening, Daniel 12, 9, for the time of the end, exactly as it is written therein, Daniel 12, 9. Because it was only closed, it's open because God has given the kingdom age covenant to all flesh so that he could pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And he says to all people, because he is the Lord God of all mankind, it says so, Jeremiah 32, 27. And he says unto one and all, he says, I shall be your God. You shall be my people. I shall forgive your iniquity, and I shall never remember it. God has never been a respecter of people. That promise was never written to the Jews or to, well, actually it was to the Jews and to all mankind, but it was never for one religious group. It was for all people. All are the same. God is not a respecter of people, or he would be a sinner according to his own word. And in the days of love making its home therein, in the end times, when the people can finally start shining as the uh, stars, as they were fearfully and wonderfully created to be by our star of stars, our, the angel of the Lord who visited Manoah, Samson's uh, parents, and who walked in the fiery furnace with Rakshak and Abednego. No, he said that it would only come through great changes, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love only. Because people, once they clue in that he alone is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored, and that he is the only, the absolute, and the just, and they get with that program of exalting his love within them as they lift him up, it's lifting them up to a higher place in him with the oneness of God. So he foretold great changes would come amongst mankind with a proper understanding of his unconditional love. That his father would make changes within them as their hearts harmoniously begin beating to the rhythm of a love song that he would someday always be singing over them in silence 
over all people of love. Now, man, you're not even going to believe what's happening now. He's just getting ready to send out the uh, disciples. Be there or be square. And one thing's for sure, if, if people love the Lord, they're going to love the praise that they're going to hear at this channel alone. There is nobody, never will be anybody, praising the Lord God like the Lord has been moving through me. Because that is contagious. As people hear the word of praise and thanksgiving and gratitude, it opens their hearts up wider. And yet, everybody is scared to death of me. <laughs> True story. Bye.